Alright guys, welcome back to Six Cars. We are en route to Nagoya for WECFest Japan 2023. I'm assuming this GR86 is heading there as well, but I had to stop and give you guys a quick look at Mount Fuji in all its glory. Pretty amazing view. There's no clouds in the way today. It's not always this clear. I had to give you guys that nice crisp shot. But yeah, we're going to get back on the road, keep heading to Nagoya, so stay tuned for some amazing WECFest content. The Rocket Bunny C5 Corvette going by in the trailer and the Y Body Mustang. And there's some more cars back there too. Everybody's heading to Wet Fest. Okay, there's Port Mess Nagoya. And we have cars rolling already. It is Wet Fest morning here in Nagoya. So without further ado, let's walk on in and get this party started. Okay guys, I'm inside Wackfest here. Um, I'm probably going to go back to the start of it because it is a huge show, but I'll go to one side, walk through the entire show, and you can see we have early access here thankfully, which is awesome. So big shout out to Wackfest for hooking us up with that. You can see there's still some cars under the wraps back there. So I want to get as much of this before the crowds fill in it. So I'll go to the start and give you guys an idea of just how huge this show is. And then we'll get right to it and check out the cars. Okay, so as you walk into Port Mess Nagoya here at Weckfest, you guys have to take in the scope of things, just how big this show is. Here, put you up for a second. So. I think the way we're going to tackle this, maybe go row by row, because there's just so many cars and so much to see. It's going to be a busy day and a long video, but a really, really cool one. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. As I've said many times before, stay tuned. Let's get to it. Here we can start right at the front. The wide body Pandem GR Yaris. Tons and tons of Itasha at the show, by the way. So we got the anime characters on the cars. There's tons of them. Some of them... Mm, I don't even know if I can show that one because it might get demonetized for the non-PG content. <laughs> but, have a look at this DC2. This one's PG. It's just a very, very cool looking design. Uh, the grid life banner, so obviously doing some track racing. Have a look under the hood. Got some spoon goodies under there. See K-Tune parts as well. Yeah, this is Wackfest, so it's going to be a lot of tasteful mods. Only the best get into these kinds of shows. Nice, nice Supra as well. So, no shortage of Hondas at Wetfest, especially Civics. Want to show you a few cool EKs here though. Starting off with the EK Coupe. Really clean looking, but check out the wheels, the Sprint Heart CPRs. A super, super clean classic multi-spoke wheel. Don't see very often, but here's the cool part. We do have another set over here on this really, really clean EK hatchback. And then just over here, we've got another EK hatchback. And this one looks like it's definitely built for the Kanjo or something of those likes. Definitely looks very high performance. Really cool. And just away from the Civics, really cool DC5. And it's got the Desmond Brega Masters spoon and brakes decked out. We've got the BMW lineup hiding behind the Civics over there. Nice E46. They've got the E92 here as well. Definitely look like they are built for some track use. And yeah, tons of E46s. That's a very clean looking engine bay interesting color check out this gt86 though always interested in a cool wheel swap between two oems look at this the classic five spoke porsche rims on the, the gt86 which actually suited pretty darn well i would say that's a really nice stance It'd be crazy not to have a look at this beetle which 
I don't know if it's the exact color, but it looks exactly like Porsche Ruby Stone Red or pink, whichever you want to call it. <laughs> but it's got the classic style seats in it, the wide body obviously, and it's got the duck bill at the back, super clean. Check out the fitment on that too. I mean, can't even really fit a pinky between the bodywork and the lip of the rim there. <laughs> That's pretty nuts. The titanium rear exhaust too. That is a cool build. An incredible pair of 964 911. So the 964 is definitely my personal favorite of 911 gens. So I know the 993 probably the most sought after because of the last of the air cool, but I think the 964 is the best looking gen, and these look absolutely incredible. Both slammed on those multi spoke classic BBS wheels. So we've got sort of the darkish blue over here. And then this one's hard to describe. It's almost like um, like a dark turquoise, if that makes any sense. But it looks super good with the white BBS multi-spokes and the gold accents over here. And then we've got the sort of brushed gray silver on the other side. And if we just have a look at the interior in the dark blue one, have a look at the seats. So like custom Porsche Recaros, it actually has the Porsche emblem printed into the headrest. So not just like stitched on or anything, that's an actual badge pressed into the headrest, that is so cool. And we've got that nice roll cage there, the fire extinguisher. And have a look at that, we've got the sequential shifter in there too. Mm -mm -mm. You know, another one for the Itasha books, we'll have to see if we can pick our favorite Itasha car from the lot here at Wackfest, because there's so many of them. This one's pretty cool though, we got the Hollow Live Girl on the side of it. Um, Hollow Live is like a VTuber concert series, so all like virtual anime concerts. Um, the car is really nice too, by the way. But yeah, obviously if you're doing a Tasha wrap, that's what you really want to stick out on the car, I would say. That one looks really interesting. We've got the Pandem GTR over there in Millennium Jade. Classic R34 color, that is really nice looking. And have a look at this 50Z actually too. Wow, that's um, quite the eccentric build there. I'm digging the little craft carbon fiber side mirrors, nice little circuit racing touch, and the huge GT wing at the back. Got the almost sort of Nismo style diffuser, kind of takes a bit of styling cues from the Nismo one. And obviously TE37s, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of these at the show today. And I just noticed on this R32 beside the 350Z, interesting touch. I mean, obviously, I literally just said we've been seeing a lot of TE37s. There's another set there. But look at the side exit exhaust. That is really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that on a R32, let alone any Skyline before. Interesting touch. And might as well have you look at this R34 while we're at it too. So while I said three spoke wheels, sort of underappreciated in the car community, brown cars. Also, huge underappreciated brown. It's so good looking. This one has a very expensive set of wheels on it, though the HREs looking really nice, and a crazy rear diffuser on the back of this R34. Check that out, and look at how far out it sticks from the rear bumper, too. Man, oh man. Here we go, even have to give a little bit of a shout out to the bikes. Small representation here, but look at this Honda Ruckus. And if you can tell how tiny this thing is, I mean, there's an NSX far in the distance, and here's the Ruckus. <laughs> Don't really need to stand too far back to get the full thing in the camera, but it's turned into like a full cruiser that's stretched out. Rear tire, that big rim at the back. And check it out, the Recaro seat covering, big exhaust. <laughs> that's pretty cool, actually. And now we can have a look at the N2 NSX on the other side of the Ruckus there sort of like, um, I guess it looks like the one that Mia was driving at the end of Fast and Furious 4, so not THE Fast and the Furious, but just Fast and Furious. And then behind that, really interesting Cayman S, so obviously the wing stands out, but the three-spoke 
iForce wheels are a huge hit. I think the three-spoke wheels are super underappreciated in the modifying world, but that actually looks really, really nice. Now, I really want to show you guys these two Jaguar F-types for one main reason. Obviously, they're quite modified and slammed and low to the ground, but it's really the interiors I want to show to you guys. They're completely reupholstered. They look pretty wild. I think, I think the brand is Koyo Design. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. But um, have a look at this sort of dark red interior with the white accents, the white stripes through the center of the seats, white stitching on the steering wheel too, those red paddles. That is really interesting. And then have a look at the coupe beside it. We'll peep in the window here. It's sort of like a dark, like olive or military green, and they've got the even darker green steering wheel and the dark green accents throughout the rest of the interior. That is so crazy looking. Can't imagine how much work and how much time it would take to do that whole interior on these Jaguars as well. And we'll have a look at the back of it here too. So you can appreciate the stance, obviously. So have a look at this thing. It's absolutely insane. It looks like a full time attack build. Obviously, the humongous carbon fiber swan neck GT wing is sticking out. Got the BBS multi spokes on it. Got the semi-slick tires, so not fully slick, so you could still technically drive it on the road. It'd be kind of dodgy in any unfavorable conditions, but why not? You got the center exit exhaust, too, coming out of the back of the bumper, which I believe the RE LMS race car had, like the first gen. Probably a nod to it. Got another interior done by our new favorite company, Coyo Design. This one is absolutely insane. Sort of a very bright turquoise with light blue accents. This car is absolutely insane. Wow. And let's have a look at the front. Of course, to the business end. Get a look at the crazy air on the front of it and see just how low it is sitting. That thing is built for Sakuba Attack or World Time Attack. Anything along those lines. What an insane looking car. Check it out more for the Itasha category. We've got the two Evos here. Now, I did actually see these guys on the highway on the way here and only caught a quick glimpse of them, but they did look really sick from afar. I can confirm they're even cooler up close. The wrap on this is absolutely amazing. I check it out how he's put the anime with the maple leaves on it through the carbon fiber weave. It's so sick. You can see the gradient too changes with the carbon fiber. It's so cool. Check it out. <laughs> if you look through the grill mesh too, he's even got some idols on the engine bay cover. Very interesting. Got the sort of chrome, almost chromous, I guess you could say like pearlescent orange TE 37s on it. And you can have a closer look at that wrap too. It is so, so detailed and so cool looking. Interior is also pretty nice too with the Momo quick release wheel. And then as we look at the friend over here, another cool Itasha wrap. So it doesn't have the same gradient carbon fiber wrap as the other one, but still a super, super cool design on the side of it. Really sticks out. Again, TE37s. You guys can probably keep a TE37 counter at this point for how many times we're gonna see that wheel. But the interior is also pretty clean looking, not overdone. The back is totally got it out though with the roll cage. Super sick. The APR GT wing on the back. And just flip around and have a look at the rear fitment too. Wow, so nice. And then have a look at the other Evo beside it. Man, that is so cool. So well done. I This might take the cake though for the coolest Itasha wraps. Either one of these, they're both so cool looking. Goodness, look at this 370Z or Fair Lady Z, Z34 on this side of the planet. Um, this is a mix of like Veil Side and Aim Game kits, but look at the stance on this. Good googly moogly. And then on the six spoke Workmeister wheels, 
but the back is so thick. Oh my goodness. Take a look at this. Flip the camera around here. Oh my, the poke on it is absolutely ridiculous. And then we've got the veil side exhaust on it too, which is actually kind of rare. I don't usually see veil side exhaust. Tons of veil side body kits. Not always the exhaust though. So that's a cool little feature. We go a Rocket Bunny Pandem kit I have not seen before. We got the Pandem Hachiroku, the A86. Of course, this is the 11 style, so not the pop up headlights. Man, oh man, it's so clean looking. Have a look at the wheel and tire setup, the work. Five spokes, very, very tiny looking. I believe they're like 14 inch. And then have a look at the Brid Lomax seats inside of it. Everything is just really, really well done in this car. Even the sort of rain, I think rain or wind deflectors, get the pronunciation right, finished in carbon fiber. So cool. We have a look at the kit from the back. I think it flows really well with the body style, actually. Nice lines on it. Super clean, 300ZX here. Finished in the midnight purple on the gold body spokes. Very, very nice. And fun fact for you, if you didn't know, those 300ZX headlights are actually Lamborghini Diablo headlights. That is true, they are the exact same part. So you can compare 300ZX and Diablo side by side images if you want. Same headlights, people. But yeah, that is a very cool looking car. Beside it, I said I liked it when people swap different OEM wheels on different cars. Well, here is an A60 Supra or the Celica XX. Got this really cool body styling on the back of it. Nice custom work. But then that's what I was talking about right there. The Ferrari five spoke wheels on it. Man, oh man, that is so good looking. Looks really nice and yellow too. We've got another OEM wheel swap beside it, the Mazda 6 Wagon on the big old Bentley wheels, which I believe are from the old, like original Continental GT or Flying Spur, those early 2000s era. Not bad. Goodness, look at the fitment on the Mark IV Supra. Oh my. Get a closer look at the wheel setup for you here. Man, oh man. Just crazy looking. We are seeing some really, really interesting builds here at Wackfest. Man, let's keep trucking. All right, here's something different, really cool. We've got an EA Civic, so from the 80s, the older, older gen Civics that we don't really see very often, but it's really cool. It's a nod to an old Macau Grand Prix touring car, which he has the identical model in there in 164 form. Yeah, it's a full on race car inside and out. Basically, all that's inside of it is the gear shift, gear steering wheel, and a seat, and a roll cage, of course. But yeah, it's a full replica of the cabin racing Civic touring car from the Macau Grand Prix. So, so cool. Here we go, we've got another nod to a classic Civic Touring car, the Idemitsu Civic. So, I believe it's originally on an EF. This car was actually in old Gran Turismo games. This one is done on an EG though, but it looks pretty much the same aside from the fact that it is, of course, an EG, this one. But it looks so cool. It's a classic livery, instantly recognizable. Really nice. And then we've got some more Civics down this way. We've got the Spoon. Coupe. We've got the Spoon EK hatchback over here as well. Finished in that very recognizable yellow, obviously, with the blue Spoon brakes and the Spoon five spoke wheels. It is mint. My goodness, that's nice. Here we always see it all here at Wackfest. Have you seen an Aston Martin on air ride suspension before? I have not. Maybe you guys have, but I have not. That's something really different, very cool. And I love, love, love the rotiform aero discs on the front. That is so good looking. And we've got another one beside it there, another cool Vantage, the full carbon fiber hood. Clean first gen Integra, but want to give a quick shout out to the wheels. The vintage Mugen Power wheels. 
such a unique design. So cool to see those. They're extremely rare, actually. And I have to give a shout out to what he's done with the engine bay here, too. Painted in this amazing, like, almost like a midnight purple from like a Nissan Skyline, actually. It's so cool. And I just want to flip around here to this EK Civic sedan. Speaking of engine base, <laughs> painted it like a Meiji chocolate bar. Oh my goodness. Not to mention the rest of the engine bay is painted in pink. Interesting take. Okay, so crowds are starting to fill in here at Wackfest. I guess the public show hours are starting and <laughs> there's still so much of the show to see. Like, it is absolutely massive. Good content for us though, which is always nice. Nice S14 there, I do love the body kit. Got the S13 over there as well, looking very, very clean. And then check out the STI hatch here and the Cyberpunk Edge Runners wrap. This is actually really cool. We got Lucy on the side and all of the Corpo stickers, Militech, all that stuff. Really cool. And a very nice looking interior, actually. You know, I think I found our winner for the coolest wheel here at Wackfest on this old Civic RTI. Check out these wheels. So those hearts aren't stickers. Those are actually like built into the wheel. You can see it's actually a bit of depth to them. That is crazy looking. Not to mention, I think like the little blue and pink stripes are really cool. You can see it's called the Southside Edition. So obviously those colors are pretty Miami. But then look at the exhaust. Here's the winner right there. Shaped like a Hello Kitty head. <laughs> oh my goodness. There is just a bit of everything going on with this thing have a look at the interior so the theme runs throughout the whole car and the engine bay is obviously really good looking too and take a look at the front what a cool build that is, is so unique okay start off this row with an incredible collection of Mazdas the really cool thing is they all sort of have classic racing liveries so we have the Aria Mimia FDRX7 in the Gretti Trust Racing livery. That's pretty iconic. And obviously the Aria Mimia kit is really cool. This one in particular has that awesome, almost like Toyota Super style looking way on the back. Very nice looking. We've got the Pandem FC over here. I don't know if this one is a particular Mazda livery, but white, blue, red, it's, it's so many different race cars have had some variation of that racing livery. Brumos Porsche comes to mind. So that's one, obviously really good looking. Then here, check this out, this FC is awesome. It's a different take on the Mazda 787 livery. So obviously the green and orange Renown livery is famous on the 787. This one's a different color scheme though. We've got the blue with the silver. And that car just looks so clean too. FCs are so underrated. This one is really interesting. We've got the Mazda RX-8, which is finished in a livery that was used in the old Grand Am series. So before we had IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, we had the American Le Mans series, and we had the Rolex Grand Am series. So two different sports car series competing against each other, but a very famous car from that old Grand Am series was these Mazda RX-8s. They were so sick. They shot a lot of flames. They were really cool cars. And this was the Castro livery. They rock with the big number 70 on the side. So cool to see. Word VS wheels look really, really good. What a cool, cool lineup of Mazdas that is. We've got a couple more to look at. So let's keep trucking. Okay, let's continue on with our Mazda trend here. This FC is really cool. Basically identical to the old IMSA GTO RX-7. So same livery. The body kit's actually pretty similar too. And it's got semi-slick tires on it. It's very wide. So cool looking. Then if we go over here, I did not know that these kits were already being sold, that they were sold this quickly. But we already have our first customer Liberty Walk Silhouette RX-7 here. And if I squeeze past some of the people that are behind me, it's getting pretty busy here at Wetfest and have a look at the side of this FD. Very cool livery, interesting wheel selection too, actually. Looks really nice. 
got the wide body FD over here, another Gretti truss livery, and two more Liberty Walk Silhouette RX-7s. We got the timeless Coca-Cola looking livery on this one. Have a look at the engine bay too. My goodness. Oh my, that's insane looking. Humongous turbo <laughs> sticking off of this thing. Wow. Incredible. And then, much like the last one, the IMSA GTO livery on the FD silhouette here. And then another crazy looking engine bay. Love all the colors that are going on with this one. Got some Mazda Speed genuine parts in there too. Man, oh man. We have to give a closer look at the interiors on some of these RX-7s too because they are so good looking. Inside the Gretti Trust FD, the white tandem racing harness on the red seats. Pretty contrasting, but really good looking and don't really see white tandem harnesses either. That's really cool. You would think those seats come out of this car over here, the Coca-Cola car, but it does have its own red and white setup. And it matches the car perfectly, of course. Have a look at that. You can get a better look at that amazing Liberty Walk silhouette kit from the rear. This is actually cool too. He's got the gold heat shield on the top of the diffuser just where the exhaust is popping out so he doesn't melt his diffuser. That is so cool looking and uh, interesting look with the rear lights. I always cover them up except for just the one small light on either side. And have a look at the IMSA GTO livery, Liberty Walk silhouette over here. These cars are absolutely ballistic looking. I mean, the black one that was unveiled at Autoslam is really cool, but now that I see it in like a proper racing livery, I'm absolutely loving this kit. Just shows how good a livery can make a car look. Wow. Really, really cool interior as well. Look at the IMSA seats. I've never seen that before. It got the houndstooth design on it too. Gretty harnesses. Oh my goodness. Incredible. So much time and so much work goes into building these cars. We have to appreciate them, guys. A bit of supercar content as well. The 488 on the F40 style wheels. Man, that looks so good. The fitment is absolutely perfect. As to be expected with a Wackfest entrant. Keep trucking down the aisle. Looks like we've got some goodies here. Beautiful E30 over there. And then check out the old and new kit on the 911 here. This is becoming quite the popular body kit, obviously, putting the slant nose on. I believe the base of these is, it's either a 996 or 997. Should be able to tell when they look at the interior. The seats are absolutely mental, by the way, too, with the Recaros. I believe this is a 997, if I'm correct. Somebody, I'm sure, will be quick to correct me if I am wrong there. But I believe that's a 997 interior. Man, that looks so good, though. And this color that it's painted and almost like a forest green too. The wing is really nice. Back up here and get a better look at it. Look at how low it sits and look at how wide it is. That is one thick boy. You know, how gangster looking is that old Mercedes? <laughs> wow, totally slammed the white wall tires. Very classic look, really cool. And very contrasting to it, we now have a line of S2000s, which is good because we haven't really looked at S2000s yet. And there's quite a diverse selection here. I mean, look at this full time attack build, and another one for our Itasha category. Got the Idol Master, interesting. <laughs> yeah, full time attack arrow, very serious looking. Dark blue on this one is very nice. Good looking kit, I believe that is the spoon front bumper as you can see like these lower I guess they're fog lights are not factory that is aftermarket part of the bumper so quite intricate and very cool got the yellow s2 with the green te37s talk about a contrasting color combination that's pretty interesting 
and then this one is fully slammed to the ground. My goodness, look at that. Can't fit a piece of paper under that one. Wow. Perfect, we've got some K-Car action. You can see the size of it just by the guy walking <laughs> in the background, how tiny the little Honda Beat is. But man, this is so, so nice. The paint is immaculate. The BBS multi-spoke suit it so well. It's lowered perfectly, like it is the perfect, perfect height for this wheel setup. Just incredible looking. That is one very nice Honda Beat. Uh, check it out, the big boy Bentley Flying Spur absolutely slammed. And it's the W12 variant too, so the big 12-cylinder engine. That is so, so sick looking. We've got some interesting picks in this row, guys. Let's see what we can see. Bunch more Itashas for our growing Itasha category here at WACFest. we got the G37 Infinity, or the Skyline Sedan, would be called in Japan. The STI wagon over here as well. And the GC body Subaru over here too. I mean, these uh, liveries, I think is about as much time and effort goes into doing the liveries as the entire car with all the modifications, everything done to it. Like, it's pretty cool. It's basically a work of art on wheels. This is why I like to see these Itasha wraps, and while they're not too many outside of Japan, I would say, like, they have their cult following, obviously, but Japan is the place to see them. And they are so well done. It's really cool. And yeah, this GC is obviously pretty crazy, too. Tons of aero on it. Okay, this is a car that I always stop to see, because it's rare around the world, even in Japan, actually. There's not too many of them. But the Nissan Pulsar GCIR, so obviously one of the big features of it that I love is that really, really unique hood intake. But it's basically a homologated rally car, SR20 under the hood. And this one looks like it's fully gutted out too. Roll cage in the back, no rear seats. It looks like it's on semi slicks too. So, so cool. It's a really, really incredible car. Very rare too, as I said before. Got the S13 over here with the Tasha Rock. And around to the side there. And just beside that, a really interesting car. This is a Mitsuoka Rockstar. So Mitsuoka, um, we did see actually the Orochi Liberty Watch at Tokyo Auto Salon, which is basically the only car that they've made that is quite unique that I know of. The rest of them are like this, where they basically made the modern rest of mods, made them look like other cars. So pretty reminiscent of a C2 Corvette convertible, just with modern touches, I guess you could say. That is the Mitsuoka Rockstar. Pretty interesting looking. Okay, check out from behind this 997. This guy has made his own custom silhouette on a 997. So you can still see the 997 taillights, obviously, but then just this ridiculous looking body work sticking out from the side. Very reminiscent of those FD Liberty Walk silhouettes we looked at before. Huge rear diffuser. Big old exhaust sticking out the back. And the craziest part, it's a horizontally mounted six cylinder and it's supercharged too. So pretty nuts. It's pushing close to 500 horsepower, I believe. Absolutely ballistic looking car. Got the Recaro buckets, the Momo steering wheel inside, and then we look at the front. It is pretty similar to these old and new body kits that we looked at before. Wow. <laughs> This is an interesting tree. We've got Toyota Tercels. You can really get a bit of everything here at Wackfest, even these little tiny Tercels. We've got the purple one there. That's sort of this, like, I don't know, like, I guess you like Arctic silver or blue. That's actually really nice looking. Then, if we walk further over here, check this out. This is like fully built into sort of a custom touring car, I would say. It definitely looks like it's got the race car vibe going on to it. 
the big huge front split of the over fenders but then check it out it's a bit of a frankenstein under the hood lots of aftermarket parts but i'm looking at the list here it's all from like different bits like with direct ignition coil from honda it's got a large throttle that fits rb26 sensors valve screens from a honda motorcycle a bit of everything that's why i'm calling it a frankenstein bill and then if you look at it, the interior too I mean, check it out. It's got the mess on the side. It's race car through and through. Just a perfect looking R33. The stretch fenders, the sort of Nardo gray body color on the brownish beige interior. And I absolutely love the handbrake and the shifter knob in that sort of brushed metallic silver. So good. And look from the back here, you can just get a better look at those flared fenders and just how they stick out a little further than factory just enough to make it look absolutely amazing that's what we call hella flush all right guys ladies and gentlemen i think i found the coolest most unique car here at wet fest nagoya this first gen lotus esprit absolutely slammed to the ground on the ssr formula wheels oh my goodness it's appropriately called the lotus l-o-w sorry of course because it's just so, it's incredible how low to the ground this is. This is I've never seen such a slammed low car in my life. Have a look at the engine bay there. Oh my goodness, it's so cool. If you take a look at the back of it, you see just how low to the ground it is. Oh man, I'm trying to talk with music in the background so we don't get demonetized here, but man, this is one of the coolest looking cars I've ever seen. My goodness. The stance, the fitment is absolutely remarkable. Uh, tire compound is cracking a bit, but as to be expected, I don't think this is really a car built for performance. It's all for the looks, and it's doing a damn good job at that, I must say. Wow, that is so cool to see. Just across from the Lotus Esprit, got the pink FD, which is obviously super nice. I have to give a shout out to this yellow FD in particular on the Reagan Masters, mainly because I recognize this car instantly. I used to see it on Instagram all the time, like years ago, like way before I came to Japan. And Yoshi.FD3S is the dude's Instagram handle. I have to give a big shout out because I was liking pictures of this car for a very long time. So pretty cool to see it in the flesh. And it looks so good in person and never gets old. So shout out to Yoshi FD3S on Instagram. Good lineup here. We got the Andam GR Supra. Looks really good. I think that kit suits the car so well. Nice fitment on it too. We got the Itasha R33. Another the one to add to the Itasha category, guys. Just keeps going. We got the incredibly underrated DR30 Skyline. It is such a good looking car. Again, it's underrated because there's never a GTR variant of this generation, but man, it looks so good. And then we've got the slammed Mini Clubman over there too, which I kind of want to get a look at from the back for you guys. Here we go. Check out the fitment, the stance, the slam on the Clubman, and we got those classic barn doors exposing that air ride suspension. Oh my. What an interesting setup that is. Oh, you know what, actually? Have a look at the back of the DR30 there, too. That massive exhaust has got on the back of it. But again, just such a cool-looking car. Very underrated. Okay, this R34. All I can say is, wow. This color is really something else. What I can equate it to is like maybe a just slighter version of like the forest green that you could get on the old Toyota Chaser. It's absolutely incredible looking. The fitment on this car is beautiful too. These five spokes look so, so good on it. Oh man, and have a look at the back. That is incredible looking. Again, I've never ever seen this color done on any, I don't think on any Skyline, let alone an R34. I believe it's a GTR too, unless he's done like a full conversion. It's pretty darn convincing then. But man, that looks so damn good. It's getting a lot of attention. It took me a while to be able to get a clear shot of this car. You can see it does attract quite a bit of a crowd for a damn good reason. So that is so good looking. Got a fantastic Skyline lineup here. A lot of 
Bar 32s, which I definitely like. But let's start off with this one, just because I want to see guys the crazy paint that's on the hood here. It's not scratches, it almost looks like uh, running water or something. It looks like a river. It's so, like, it's mesmerizing. I gotta say, it's really, really cool. And the wide body on this one is really nice too. Again, it's not like the bolt-ons, it's more like just flared fenders. Really nice. The Recaro carbon buckets look ballistic on this thing. Really crazy looking. Got another nice white R32 over there. Just quite a few R32s. <laughs> Got a silver one on the TE37s here. Very, very good looking. And this one over here and out. The white multi spokes look really good against the silver. And the interior is fully gutted out, so obviously he must do a lot of track driving. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, this would be the king of the R32s that we have here. One that we did see at SEMA, actually. But in case you guys didn't see that video when I was there back in November, I'll show you guys quickly what's really, really cool with the SS Active R32. So with the RB is been bored out to an RB30 by HKS. Absolutely ballistic at the Garrett Supercharger on it. And then the full body is in midnight purple carbon fiber. It's just insane, this car. It's absolutely incredible. We've got the custom SS Active Recaro bucket seats in there as well. You can see the entire car, like the tub, everything, has been converted to carbon fiber. The interior is Alcantara. It's just insane looking. My goodness, what a crazy looking car. Have a look at this S2000. This would be the Jay's Racing GT wide body kit. When I say wide, I definitely mean wide. <laughs> It sticks out so far from the door line here. Check it out. You see just how wide that kit is. And add some crazy arrow to it, obviously meant for that track look. And I can see down there with those small little winglets sticking out from the side skirts there. Oh man. And then we've got the huge Voltex Racing Swan that could top it off at the back. So yeah, obviously, this would be something that I would assume is getting some track time. And then having a look at these massive exhausts that's dumping out of the back through the new Jay's Racing bumper. And you can see the ventilation that's running just behind the rear tires there. Get some of that air out of the wheel well. Man, that is a wild looking car. Wow, look at the Saluka GT4 here. So the SP205 generation, obviously famous for rallying and check out the rally hella headlights on the front. So cool. All the casings are finished in carbon fiber along with the hood, which is awesome. And yeah, the OMP bucket seats and yeah, it's fully decked out for racing as it should be. at the end of the show we've seen some incredible cars but there's still a few more to go here got some german content another nice e36 here very clean looking this is definitely the coolest volkswagen though got the volkswagen corrado this body style is just so cool so timeless i love it when they just lower these things to the ground too it looks so good but i definitely love that notch back styling there you can see there so cool and the Corrados are getting pretty expensive now from what I understand uh, I think the VR6 engine is super desirable so get them while they're hot I guess <laughs> clean at first gen TT don't really see these very often but that finish is really good uh, these BBS wheels are pretty cool BBS design line I love the center cap too the yellow with the green BBS logo very nice that's a tasteful car I like it 993 is obviously very tasteful. Hard to do that wrong. Looks really, really good. All right, ballistic, ballistic Evo 5. And I'll show you guys why. Look at the radiator in the front grill here. That little sheep logo means quite a bit, actually. Because if we look through the grill and we see that big old turbo, we have a sheepy race front facing turbo kit on this Evo. I mean, you can see just how mental it is. The cuts that have to be made through the hood to allow the exhaust out. The heat shields, this is pushing out a ridiculous amount of power. I believe it's about 850, what the sheet says. And 
and the interior fully gutted. It's on air ride. Wow, look at the, oh, the gear shifter. Okay, okay. But, um, yeah, it, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. The raised wheels on it, too, look really nice. The classic red on an Evo 5 or a 6 just complements everything so well. Here we go, guys. I guess we will finish off the show with a couple of special Hondas. But the amazing yellow NSX Type R and the very rare Mugen CRX. So when I walked past these cars earlier uh, for the like early media access, these cars did have covers on them, so I couldn't see them before. But now, get a better look at them. The NA1 NSX Type R, I mean, not much needs to be said. It's a classic, the supercar killer of the 90s, fighting the Ferraris, things like that. And then we have the very rare Mugen CRX. I think back in the day, this was actually called a Civic CRX before it was considered like its own thing. But you can see it also has those classic Mugen power wheels on it. So cool, very, very classic. Um, that's awesome to see. And it's just a cool, rare car. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. I'm not sure how many of the Mugen CRXs they made. They are quite rare. That is really cool to see. Okay guys, that pretty much does it for us today at Wegfest. We saw pretty much everything, or everything that we could see, I guess. I'm sure I maybe glossed over a few, but it's been a busy day. We've been here for about like six, seven hours. So um, it's a huge show, but a huge shout out to Wegfest. This is probably the best modified uh, import car show that I've ever been to. There wasn't really one like bad car. Everything was done really well. So many different styles, so many different tastes. It was awesome. So big shout out to Wegfest again and all of you guys for tuning in. Thank you again. And as always, hit subscribe, comment, share, all that jazz. And yeah, let me know the favorite Itasha car too because I was keeping track of all of them. So until next time guys, I will see you then. That's a wrap. <laughs>